Welcome to Creative Innovators. Please enjoy this podcast series. It is really about where to take your career. Yes, you're going to be listening to great people who are doing crazy and amazing things across sometimes wide and diverse careers. But it's really a place to get inspired. My name is Gigi Johnson, and I'm so glad to have been building this podcast across 2020, a year that will live in some kind of infamy. But hopefully, you've built some ground speed. Go back, listen to past episodes, and listen to all sorts of great directions people have taken their careers in a wide variety of creative enterprises different types of occupations, come join us. And also feel free to go to creativeinnovatorsclub.com, our new space where we're going to be gathering people to take a look at how do I build my next creative career? And we've got new classes for rebuilding your creative career for 2021. Come join us at Creative Innovators Club, and you can see all sorts of great tools that go with this toolbox of creative innovators. I am a fangirl for Laura Ascuday. Laura runs Electronic Creatives, but that's not all she does. She has created essentially a whole genre for herself, training people on how to use Ableton Live and now using all sorts of techniques and tools to help creatives understand how how to expand their personal engineering, their audio playback, creating the live music performance with all sorts of great tools. I first met her at South by Southwest. She was demonstrating both an electronic violin concert that she built around herself, but how she used Unreal Engine to create variability and randomness around this pre-structured violin concert. She's done that now for major organizations, major talent, including Kanye West in The Weeknd, and now teaches this pivoted totally online this year. I should say, when you hear this, it's going to be 2021. Laura has built a teaching platform, a community platform, and a transformational platform for people to build talent in with technology. Enjoy Laura's adventures and think about what you could do in this whole realm of mixing tech with creativity and experience. I am totally amazed by you. I really love what you do in combining technology, creation, teaching, personal activation. It's such a magical combination. And I was so happy to meet you at South by Southwest, listening and watching you share all this with people. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about what you do now? Because it's such an interesting interfolding of so many different things together. What is the magic of Mm. Laura Escudet Enterprises? Thank you. Well, first of all, I'm so excited to be here. Um, It was wonderful to meet you. It was like you were the person in the room that was like, I know what you're talking about. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, So yeah, I call myself an artist uh, slash entrepreneur like that's the zoomed out version um within that um i'm a music producer i'm a violinist i am a live show designer and producer so my uh, loves are just music and technology and education and you know helping artists and other folks to learn about how to use technology to create their and envision their dream live shows. So that's kind of been my mission for a while now. And yeah, I do a lot of work um, in the music tech space, both as an artist and also as an entrepreneur and um, playback engineer. So um, that is a person that does all the music playback for live shows. And I've toured quite a bit and done a lot of different things. So yeah, that's kind of the broad strokes, um, elevator pitch, I suppose. <laughs> and it's a unique elevator pitch. I mean, I'm, I've am i not met anybody else that, that has that mix of superpowers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I do think it is kind of like um, a little bit rare 
what I do. And I've just have really combined all of my loves together and, uh, yeah, just kind of keep adding on and personal development and, um, supporting women in the industry is also really important to me and showing that it's a safe space for them to come and learn and, uh, grow their art and their artistry. And so, yeah, I just love to be inclusive and include as many people in my process and, uh, with my education stuff as well. And just, you know, it's really important for me to be a you know good example for, um, folks that are coming up and wanting to learn and get into music technology. So I'm going to back you up way back in personal history. What the way back machine, Laura, when she was a little person was mm-hmm. a musician early on. I mean, you at one of your cores is as a fabulous violinist, right? Yeah. So, um, I started playing violin when I was six and just fell in love with the instrument and performing, And uh, it wasn't until I was in college that I discovered electronic music and music production. So for a really long time, I was just, you know, classical violinist, played in an orchestra, read music on a sheet of paper, and then kind of just started to get more into the technical electronic side of things later on. So are you from a musical family, a tech family? Uh, definitely a bit musical. I mean, my mom played guitar and sang and, you know, piano. So I definitely remember her kind of playing instruments as I was growing up. Um, but other than that, you know, no one else in my family was really very musical. Um, and not super technical. I mean, I, I, I didn't really consider myself to be technical and late until later on. And I really had to work at it because it was, uh, it was challenging, you know, it was very, uh, intimidating when I first started to get into the tech, but, you know, I, I kind of joke around that the, the most tech that I used was the, the dual cassette, um, player. And I would tape one tape to the other tape to make mixtapes when I was a kid. So that was kind of the most tech that I got into. Well, I was going to say that also identifies the era too, right? Yes. So if you're explaining that yes. now, it'd be like, <laughs> You would do what? I know, I know. I said that actually the other day and someone was like, I don't I don't remember that. I'm like, Yeah, you're you're very young. <laughs> of course you wouldn't. <laughs> well, it was also part of dating, right? So you'd make a mixtape when you were yes. dating, or it would be your car tape, right? Uh-huh. So that you'd be that you'd be curating your own playlist as something you'd carry with you. Absolutely. And yeah, Casey Kasem, you know. And, and and but you'd think about that you were choosing music and then thinking about creating a portable experience before music was portable. Yeah, gosh, that ages me as well. Yeah. Where did where did you grow up? <laughs> so um, my father was in the military. So I was born in Florida, lived in Guam, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maryland. Spent a little time in Nashville, Tennessee, and then uh, came back to Florida for for college. So. All around, but I've been in uh, L.A. for oh, about 16 years now, which is wild to think about. So college for you was as a musician, as a, what did you study? I studied violin performance with a minor in business. Yeah, so I was trying to figure it out. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I, I kind of I knew that I didn't really want to become a classical violinist, um, but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, I, I was good. I definitely was good, but I wasn't the type of violinist that would practice 10 hours a day. You know, I just, I just didn't want to kind of live that lifestyle. So I started looking at other areas around music to get into. What did you think you wanted to be when you grow up? I'm spending a lot of time with 20-year-olds right now, and they're having this, how do I envision where I'm going? So the 20-year-old <laughs> you thought you wanted to do... You know, at the time, I was like, you know, I'll play violin. Uh, I wanted to get into music education. thought maybe I'll be a teacher. Well, that's interesting, because you <laughs> are. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, you know, it's only been kind of recently, again, that I've been doing more teaching it's you know for a while I, I didn't do any of it so it's kind of interesting how things kind of come f- full circle um but yeah I, I, di- I really didn't know I was actually I got um a scholarship to to go to grad school to study music education and I kind of was like you know I, I wasn't fully feeling it so that's when I decided to move to LA and kind of try my hand at, at LA um but you know 
I just wasn't sure. I didn't know. And it's kind of impossible to know, I think, until you have more life experience. I think some people are like, oh my gosh, I've known I wanted to do this from day one. Well, me, I was kind of floating. I was like, I want to do music, but not exactly the way that I thought it was going to look like. And so it really just happened. My career just unfolded as I kind of progressed and the people that I met and the experiences that I had and the more I was exposed to things. And so, yeah, I, you know, I, I also see a lot of young people that are like, I, I need to figure it all out right now. And they put so much pressure on themselves. And it's like, it's hard to, to you know, to imagine that it really just unfolds, but it does. <laughs> Or it's different places for different people. We've had people on this show who started their business at 14. And you kind of go, okay, that was so not me. I was wandering in the dust at 14. I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. I don't know where the heck that went. <laughs> but, you know, the, sort of the dream stages you have is what you're exposed to. So you came to Los Angeles. What did you walk into? Well, at first, I um, I walked into Craigslist. <laughs> Yay, so I got on, Craigslist. I, I got into Craigslist, and I just was like, you know, whatever job um, I could get. And I, um, yeah, I, I, I was like a, a contestant. Well, I'm not contestant. I was in the audience at uh, game shows. So I was like, you know, in the audience, I got paid like $15 an hour to just kind of sit there and clap and, you know, look cool or whatever. And, um, so I did that. And then from there I met this guy that had like a market research company and he had me come and like try food and like watch movies and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, uh, I just did all kinds of odd jobs. I, I did like less than a day of being a talent scout where I had to go up to, to parents, uh, at malls and, and try to get their children, you know, scout out children for talent. I mean, it was awful. I couldn't, uh, I was, I'm sorry. It was really <laughs> a day of that sounds like, a, I know there are people, that this is what they do. They're probably very happy about it. But, um, to me, the day of that would be a day too long. It was, it was, I, I actually didn't do it at all. I, I went there and I got trained and I just would try and, I, you know, I just, it wasn't me. So I was just trying to find anything in music, but it was challenging because, you know, in Florida, after I graduated from school, I actually started um, teaching at uh, a school there um, and I was teaching Pro Tools and I was teaching like music production stuff. So I had a little bit of experience, but I got to LA and just the market was so saturated. Everyone, you know, they had their teachers, everyone was working already. So I was like, well, I'm just going to find, you know, whatever odd job that I can. And then I, I, I actually just a, a stroke of luck, actually, um, I had a, a keyboard that was broken and uh, I kept calling the company, it was M Audio, and I kept calling them and saying, you know, this this keyboard's not working. And I was on a PC and and they're like, well, try a Mac. And I was like, well, it works on the on a Mac, but I don't have a Mac. I have a PC. And they just kind of left me in limp, you know, the guy left me in limbo. And I was like, I spent a lot of money for this, you know, I, I needed it to work. This is my only keyboard. And then I remember my friend and I went out to this electronic music night and uh, somehow I started talking to this guy and then I was, you know, I put two and two together. I'm like, wait a minute, you're the guy from tech support. You know, I've been talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you didn't hit him with the keyboard or anything right? else. No, no. I mean, he was a really nice guy. He was trying to, you know, figure it out. And he was like, you know, you really know a lot about this stuff because every, you know, everything that he said to me, I had a counter for. I'm like, no, but this, this, and this. And he's like, you actually know a lot of stuff. He's like, let me introduce you to my boss. And so I went in and I interviewed and yeah, just kind of got the job. And so all of a sudden I had like a, a job and it was great. <laughs> but that was as what was uh, tech as? support. I was doing tech support. So all the people that couldn't get their stuff to work. Um, so you're on either, the phone telling on the people, phone oh, is, is it or on? Email. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. That was the number one thing. So is the O-N-O-F-F -F switch, is that flipped to the O-N side? You know, uh, That is so massively nine specific, times, but yeah. I can totally see. <laughs> I had a boss once who was trying to show off years ago to her brother who came in that she could use her computer and it wasn't working. And I just quietly went and flipped the on switch on and then she was really <laughs> embarrassed. But um, Totally, yeah. <laughs> but that's part of the charm of tech support. 
part of the thing. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great though. It was like all of the people, this particular you know manager, amazing guy. Um, he just had a, a knack for finding all of the just the best people, and we were all around the same age, and you know we were all making electronic music and producing and. You know, there was just such a great camaraderie there. And we all started to just, we, you know, build each other up. We just started, you know, doing shows together. And, you know, so we formed this community there. And it was really great. So you were tech support queen with a great I tech was. support community. Yes. And then went to do what? Because I know, I know some of your journey, but not how you got into some of it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. how did you end up? doing all of the audio <laughs> play but I mean you've done so many amazing things how did you go from that into your superpowers well uh, at the time um M audio was distributing this little known software called Ableton Live and um Ableton was the free software that you got when you got a keyboard or you got an interface and so we had these people calling and saying I got this software called Ablatron and I have no idea how to use it. And I was like, well, gosh, I don't know how to use it either. And I was get, you know, getting these calls and I wanted to be up on, on things. So I started to learn how to use it. And then I was like, wow, this software is amazing. Like it's for live performance. And before that I was, you know, using reason, which is also a great piece of software, but I had to load a different session for every song, uh, when I perform live. And when I discovered Ableton, it was like, I could just have all the songs in live. So I, I learned the software and pretty soon I started doing demos for the company at like the NAM show and, you know, doing presentations. And, um, I actually had a couple other jobs at Imaudio. Um, I was only there for two and a half years, but I was really like, I you know, wanted to climb the ladder. And so then I moved over to sales and I did sales for a little while. And, you know, that wasn't really my jam. And then they had um, a, a job in marketing as an artist relations assistant. And so I did that and I, I became the tech support for, you know, all of the artists. So kind of big name artists would come in and get gear and then they would call me and say, my thing is not working, okay. you know. <laughs> so I just started doing tech support for these artists. And then, you know, I become very friendly with the company Ableton. And um, I caught wind that they were going to start doing their own distribution. They'd gotten, you know, to a certain level where they're like, hey, we want to just go out on our own. And they'd raise their brand's awareness by being in all these M audio boxes, which was great. And uh, so I just said, hey, can you you know, take me with you. And so I interviewed and, um, yeah, they, they hired me on. So I became the first, um, West coast product specialist, uh, for Ableton. This is back in 2007. And, uh, you know, this is like my first taste of freedom because they didn't have an off office in LA. So I was working from home and I was kind of like, you know, kind of an entrepreneur, but like, you know, had a job and it was great and it had benefits and all the things. <laughs> and um, so I was going around to, you know, all the stores and schools and doing a lot of presentations and um, teaching people how to sell Ableton Live and also use Ableton Live, teaching all the salespeople like, hey, this is why you would want to sell it to someone and blah, blah, blah. So I did that for um, about a year, and then I uh, I actually won the top salesperson of the month award, and you know I won a like a little iPod Nano. If you remember those things? And oh yeah, well those yeah. were those were cool back then, right? They were very cool. And Music very in your revolutionary, pocket and it looked yeah. cute. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I won one of those, and then I remember like that same day I was you know I was in San Francisco. I'd just done a training and. I was really happy and my boss called me and he was like, Hey, you know, I really need to talk to you. And I was like, Oh gosh. Okay. It sounded serious. And he said, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to lay you off. And I was just floored. I was like, what do you mean you have to lay me off? Like, this is my dream job. I love this. This is, you know, and so then he said, well, we're going to lay you off, but we're going to make you the first Ableton certified trainer. And at the time, you know, I didn't, it didn't really mean that much, but I had been helping to develop the program when I worked at the company. And I, I just kind of knew it was like, okay, like Pro Tools certification, you know, like there's Ableton certification. So um, 
you know, they laid me off and I lost my benefits and all that stuff. And I was really sad about that. But then they also were still hiring me freelance and then made me a certified trainer. And, you know, I started interviewing at different companies, but nothing felt right. You know, it was just, I didn't want to go back to driving an hour, hour and a half, you know, to a different side of town to like go work at a desk job again. I just, I had that taste of freedom and I just didn't really want to do it. So, um, I just started my own, my own company, you know, I started doing consulting for different brands and Ableton was one of the, one of my clients. So they would hire me from time to time. And, um, this is when the economy tanked back in 2008. So things got really kind of sketchy for a lot of companies then. And, uh, so I was kind of, you know, they didn't want to hire anyone full time, but I was doing like a little piece here and a little piece here. And, you know, so pretty soon I had, um, a little company where I was representing all these brands and I had all these relationships at the stores and at the school. So I'd just go in and say, Hey, now I'm peddling this software and this software and this, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, kind just, of a manufacturer's rep, but in an interesting kind of combined portfolio way. Right. It was just for all the smaller brands that really couldn't afford to have a full-time person. So it was like the really niche kind of brands. And so that was great. You know, I just really loved doing that. And I, I did that for about a year. And then uh, I got a call from uh, this guy, well, got an email from this guy that works at Cirque du Soleil. And they said, hey, we've got this position in Vegas. Do you want to move to Vegas for four months and program this show called Viva Elvis um, based on Elvis's catalog? And I was like, sure. Um, <laughs> I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> but I was like, sure, I, I can do it. I know Ableton really well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I literally got the job just because, you know, I was at the forefront of, you know, the Ableton Live movement, and I was on the website and, and all that kind of stuff. And so yeah, I, I went there and I worked for four months on this show, learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> um, but, you know, I made it out alive, came back to LA in 2010. And then from there that I started kind of the next form of my my business, which was um, live show playback, uh, playback engineering, live show design. And so I just started getting calls. And I, I remember I got a call from this guy who was a, a sales rep, one of my, you know, relationships from when I was going around all the stores. And he said, Hey, I've got this, this guy, he's Kanye West's engineer. Do you want to, you know, go work with him? And I said, sure. Uh, so I went and I uh, worked with this, this guy, Anthony, and uh, Anthony Kilhoffer. And, you know, he said, teach me how to do this stuff. And then kind of fast forward a bit, you know, a lot of stuff happened, but it, you know, then I found myself like in the position where I was like, actually you do it. <laughs> so then that's kind of started my career with touring. I mean, I literally started kind of at that level, you know, most people kind of work their way up from like, you know, a van to, you know, <laughs> a van with an attachment on the back to like <laughs> a bus and, and it was literally from went from zero to 100, like very quickly. So, yes, yeah, so then I started touring and got into so all that. So for those who don't know what a playback engineer is, because I must admit, yeah. I was foggy on it till I've spent some time just looking at your work. Yeah. What is the what is the what is the work of a playback engineer? Because it seems to be incredibly gear and system and software set up, but it's understanding space it's being slightly psychic. I mean, it looks like it's an entire kind of layer cake of skills. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that you said psychic because it's really, you know, a lot of artists expect for you to read their minds. <laughs> it's like, I wanted that. Well, you didn't say that. Um, but it, Basically, it's it's you're responsible for the the playback of all the music during a live performance that the band isn't performing, right? So most um, modern bands have some sort of playback because you know the artist or the uh, the audience wants to hear the music as it sounds on the record. And so the band will play along with some stems, um, some other tracks that are made to fill in the production, right? 
and also like a click so that they can keep in time with one another. Everyone's got in-ears on, which are like headphones that are inside your ears. And um, it also syncs up with the lighting and the visuals uh, just to make sure that every time that chorus hits, you know, that same flash of lights and video happens um, every night. So really playback is a very important role because it's kind of the glue that um, brings everything together between you know, the band and um, the folks that are mixing the show, whether it's monitors or front of house and the lighting and video. And so that means that we're responsible for making whatever crazy idea that the artist or musical director or someone in the band, whatever crazy idea they want, we have to make it happen. So if they're like, this song is too slow, I want to speed it up, or I want to take out the bridge of this song and I want to extend the chorus or I want more backing vocals. I want to kind of layer some more vocals in there, or um, I don't want any backing vocals. I want to take it out for the song, or I want to pitch the song down because my voice is kind of, you know, raspy tonight and I've been singing a lot of days in a row, or I want to remix the song because I'm tired of it and I want it to sound different and I've played it a hundred times and I want to do a reggae remix of it, or, you know, I want to bring in a lion roar from you know, South Africa, and it's got to be this really specific I you were one. Say, I'd like to bring a lion on stage. No, 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 that doesn't work in the playback. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there's just all these different kind of things that could be thrown at you, and you just got to be ready to um, kind of act on whatever wish they want. So you then ended up touring with Kanye for a while. I did. Yeah. So it was like. 2011 through 2017, mostly not full time. I mean, you know, he tours, but he doesn't tour like, um, say, I don't know, Ariana Grande or Rihanna or some of these pop acts where they tour for years, you know, um, but he did a lot of shows, you know, he did a lot of shows. So I did all those shows and tours that he did. And then in between would work with other artists on their shows. And yeah, so that was like kind of the lifestyle for a while. Until it wasn't. Until it wasn't. Yeah. Until it wasn't. Yeah. So in 2016, I um, just was completely like burned out. I'd done three different shows with three different artists in a week and including Kanye and um, kind of just was back to back in different cities. And, you know, it some my body just kind of was like, no, you're not going to you got to slow down. So yeah, I had a I had a health crisis then, and um, took me a little while to recover from that. And um, but it really did make me stronger um, after the fact because I was like, hey, you know, I gotta like take care of myself more. I can't run myself into the ground. I can't, you know, I can't live this way anymore. And so that was really when I started my transmute programs, um, where I just had this vision of bringing together health and wellness and spirituality and personal growth and all the things that I love that just feed me and like make me happy and um, bringing that stuff together with the music and the technology and the artistry and all the things that I love on that side. So I created the Transmute Retreat um, back in 2017. And from there, that spawned my Transmute Accelerator program, which is um, actually coming up. It's going to be a year-long program, artist development program for artists who want to learn how to harness the power of technology to create their amazing live shows and live streamed shows. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, it was out of that, I just start, stopped touring um, as much. I mean, I still have done shows like, you know, I'll do like the Grammys or certain things. I've also done playback on American Idol for the last couple of years. Um, but I just kind of started taking care of myself a little bit more. And I wasn't like jetting off to, you know, London if I got a call like, hey, we need you to go to London tomorrow, you know, or we need you to go to London in a few hours, which is kind of more what it was like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you're able to then have a home base and be able yeah. to then connect with people globally. I mean, I find fascinating. We're, we're recording this in November of 2020, where we've been a big chunk of the year in teaching and working and living remotely. And you stepped on that bag wag bandwagon a couple of years earlier. 
I did. Yeah, I'm really thankful for that. You know, I had the vision of creating this global online community of artists and um, I really saw a niche, you know, I saw a way that I could parlay my knowledge from working with these artists, you know, like Kanye and uh, to helping independent artists with their shows and really helping them achieve a level of, um, you know, self-expression and growth within their own music. And I just started seeing more and more that artists like wanted to, um, be performing, wanted to have control of the, over their own stuff, didn't want to have to rely on anyone else on stage um, to make these kinds of decisions. So yeah, that's kind of where the whole idea stemmed from. And, and the word transmute is just very special to me. It just, you know, came into my mind one day and I, I looked it up, I'd heard it before, but it just means to uh, move from one form of energy into another. And I just thought that that was just so fitting for what I was trying to do. I was like, okay, we're here right now, but I want to be here. And how do we do this? We morph, <laughs> we transmute the energy from here to there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how my, my program was born. And, and, uh, you know, with this year, 2020 being, um, you know, challenging year, um, my company electronic creatives that does music playback for artists. I mean, we had, you know, so many tours on the line and, um, within a couple of days, uh, everything just got canceled as we all know. And so, um, I, I was like, hey, you know, this is actually great. I'm going to focus on my artistry. I'm going to focus on my transmute program. And I just like really dove headfirst into like focusing on it 100%. And I just discovered, hey, like this is really what I love doing. I'm um, not at the mercy of anyone else because even though I wasn't touring, we were still kind of at the mercy of other artists and their schedules and, you know, crazy stuff that would happen. And so it feels good. You know, it feels like everything's kind of come full circle from, you know, when, when I wanted to be a teacher and, and when uh, I started becoming, you know, an Ableton certified trainer and all that stuff. And, and I've been able to perform a lot online and do live streams and all of my performances, I try to do a little bit of educational stuff as well. So yeah. And you're doing webinars also, which I've, I've stepped in a few of them and yeah. that's been fascinating. Yes, 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 definitely. So, um, and then I've just created the Transmute Academy, which is um, my educational platform. So there's, we've got some free courses on there. We've got some um, paid courses on there. And then folks can find out about my Transmute Accelerator program if they want to kind of like go all in and work with me and my team and all that, all that stuff. So that's actually been a, a fairly recent launch. And I'm really excited about that because um, you know, we had our community on Facebook and, th you know, just things were kind of like everywhere. And now it's like, okay, there's one, one spot you go there, you join the community for free, get to hang out, learn things from folks, watch some amazing courses and videos and just kind of integrate. And I just feel like we've got such an amazing community of like high vibe artists. I mean, that's kind of like what, it, what my mission is, is to call all the people that are, you know, supportive of others and, you know, are doing amazing, wonderful things in their career. Just call everyone to one place and be like, all right, let's all hang out here and nerd out and support each other and rise up. And it's also international. I mean, I, um, you, you have a much yeah. bigger than a Los Angeles footprint as a result. Oh, yeah, totally. So um, with every Transmute Accelerator session, we've had um, people from, you know, off the other side of the world, Singapore, Australia, um, Slovenia, Barcelona, I mean, just really all over the world. It's a, it's a global, truly a global community. And diverse, I assume. Very diverse. Yes, a lot more women joining in the program, which is great. And yeah, just a lot of amazing folks. Um, yeah, from all all walks of life, really. I mean, to me, watching it, it's almost like it's teaching someone a new language or a whole other layer of creativity on top of what might be someone who's been performing for quite a few years but doesn't think of themselves as a tech person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, we have opened it up a bit more. Um, when I first started the program, I wanted it, you know, it was just for ninjas, right? It was like, okay, we want all the ninjas to get become even more ninja. And then I just realized, oh, wow, there's all these artists that are like just starting out and they want to 
they want to be here too. So I've started to, you know, create more content for those folks as well and just make it kind of inclusive for all levels. And um, heading into 2021, we've kind of revamped the program. So it's going to be a year long program and we've got um, sessions for beginners. We've got sessions for advanced people. We've got creative empowerment sessions. We've got a mastermind with me every month. We've got guest artists from all over the world zooming in and talking about their process and performing for us. And um, the artists in the program also get to perform on a, a festival online. And so, um, so I think it's just a really unique experience and i um, just really happy with the way that it's come together. And I have an amazing team and all that as well. So, Excellent. Well, we are pretty much near the end of our conversation, though. We can yes. always pick it up once your programs are further along for this coming year. But anything that we haven't talked about that you'd want to mention before we wrap up? Um, probably just to, you know, check out my music and um, check out my YouTube. Got lots of tutorials and things there, music stuff, performances. Um, I've got some sample packs and new music in the works. So, yeah, just come hang out on my channels. Come check out the Transmute Academy and see what's going on there. And yeah, just get into my world. It's it's super fun. So now we've heard Laura talk the story of how she started out with a bit of a random walk and was able to come in at early stages of interesting changes from her M audio not connecting up with your keyboard. I think that's a fascinating pivot point. Uh, we'll put all of the ways to find you in the show notes. And I'm excited to see what happens in your adventures in the world ahead, the year ahead and the world ahead. Thanks for joining okay. us. Thanks for having me. This is great. Well, there's the adventure. I hope you found this inspirational. If you are interested, please find them to participate in their work through our show notes or their social media and come back to future episodes of Creative Innovators to get inspired in your work. And if you'd like to rebuild your career, come find us at nextcareer.me to take our next career program to figure out what you might do as your new adventures as a creative innovator.